here we are folks at the end of the videos so I said in our video yesterday I would announce what our next series would be uh, on and I'm not gonna lie I love the American Civil War in history it is my first passion so I've decided for our next two series I will be doing the Army of the Potomac its commanders and the campaigns it fought in as well as well as its makeup and then following that series I will be doing the same kind of thing on the Army of Northern Virginia I can go months of content on the Battle of Gettysburg alone and honestly I might um, I might literally just go regiment to regiment at one point but we'll come to that when that time comes um, I literally grew up learning about history and especially the American Civil War most families you go to your Sunday event everyone's like talking about football you know how are the Jets how are the Dolphins whatever mine is talking about Sickles movements on the second day and how he could have possibly outflanked Longstreet but again thank you so much everyone for coming on this journey through the most consequential battle in the US history and today we'll be discussing the township of Gettysburg in modern times a little bit of our uh, outside our normal discussion area but um if i can do anything to help out gettysburg and spread a little more about it i'm happy to do it gettysburg has as a town uh, of course grown since the battle the jenny wade house no longer rests on the outskirts of town since the 159 years famous individuals have visited gettysburg presidents foreign leaders authors and millions of people who wished to view the last full measure of devotion that 50,000 men gave advancing. A famous resident of Gettysburg was actually General and President Dwight D. Eisenhower. What was the Confederate position, is today known as West Confederate Avenue, was actually used for the first U.S. armor uh, to train, actually. Uh, back in the early 1930s, they used uh, West Confederate Avenue to uh, do maneuvering with the uh, armored divisions. Another president associated with Gettysburg is John F. Kennedy. When he made his tour of the field, he fell in love with not only the field, but the story of Gettysburg, to see the hills of monuments, specifically falling in love with the eternal peace light that sits on Oak Hill. I'm actually going to do a video uh, separate about Oak Hill and about the eternal peace light, because it's a beautiful story, the um, 50th anniversary of the battle. He loved it to the point that when he was assassinated in November of 1862, his wife, Jacqueline Kennedy, had an eternal peace light placed at his grave at the Arlington National Cemetery. Another huge thing was the installation of over 1,328 monuments. Initially, the only monuments allowed were those of federal forces. Many, like the states of New York and Pennsylvania, would pay for large state monuments. Other units, like the 14th Brooklyn or even the New York Irish Brigade Monument, was built by communities of the regiments. Then many federal corps commanders and George Meade received statues on behalf of the United States Senate and House of Representatives. However, following the Spanish-American War, many Americans, after once again fighting together against a common enemy, decided the pain of the Civil War was finally over. One of the first Confederate monuments were erected at Gettysburg on June 8, 1917. This was the Virginia State Monument paid by the state of Virginia. It is only one of the two statues bearing an equestrian of a Confederate general, being Robert E. Lee, who is forever looking across the field of Pickett's Charge, looking towards the equestrian statue of George Meade. Unlike the statues in cities of generals and things like that, these monuments are actually markers. Uh, Union equestrian statues are usually near the Corps headquarters, and markers are placed around the field where Confederate and Union regiments and brigades uh, once stood. I personally, whenever I visit, go to the Wheat Field and stand where the 69th New York fought to pay my respects to my um, descendant who died in the fighting. The town itself, instead of burying the history, has decided to embrace it. Battle to field tours are all over the field. Some through the National Park Service, other through private companies, and others through mom and pop shops. Um, all throughout the town, you can t take tours. Another growing industry in Gettysburg is the ghost tour industry. 
Across the town, multiple family-owned businesses conduct historical candlelight Civil War ghost tours and uh, the Haunted Orphanage tour, which I, I can do a whole video about that, and I think I will, because that's something that a lot of people don't know about. But um, a great a great man who started the Ghost of Gettysburg, the actual brand Ghost of Gettysburg, uh, his name is Mark Nesbitt. He used to be a park ranger for the National Park. He's a great guy. He has gone out of his way over his years of being in the National Park to actually collect a lot of the stories he was told. But one of the greatest things to come from the modern day is the cyclorama. The Gettysburg cyclorama is a 360 degree painting depicting the fighting during Pickett's Charge. Created by the artist Paul Philippot, he was a French artist, so that's why the uniforms of the soldiers look very reminiscent of French military. But he would also create it, and today it still stands at the Gettysburg Visitor Center, right in town for people to still view and experience being at the angle at Pickett's Charge. Again, the town has embraced the battle, making themselves a top tourist capital for the state of Pennsylvania. Sadly, the National Cemetery has also grown over the years following the Spanish-American War, Great War, Second World War, and the Cold War conflicts, as well as the modern-day uh, conflicts. There are three monuments of note in this cemetery, the first being the statue of John F. Reynolds in the uh, towards Cemetery Hill. Um, being he was the most senior officer killed in the battle, um, he's one of the only, I think he is the singular person who has more than one monument. He actually has three. He has an equestrian monument, he has the marker where he got shot, and he has this monument in the cemetery. The next is the National Soldiers Monument, which is originally the centerpiece of the National Cemetery, starting construction in the summer of 1865. Every year during the Remembrance Day, November 19th, Union Civil War reenactors will stand post in vigil to show we will never forget the men who died during the three days, and in extension, all who have died in defense of the United States. The monument has the sculptures of history, plenty, peace, and war. But war is not in the image of an Olympian god. Instead, he is a Union soldier as a reminder for all. And then finally, we come to the Masonic Friend to Friend Monument, which in some ways is the centerpiece of the cemetery today. It bears the scene of Captain Bingham comforting the wounded General Louis Armistead. The monument was commissioned by the Freemasons of Pennsylvania to represent the Freemasons of the North and South who fought and died together as brothers. But in an even more sad sense is his dedication to the friendship of Winfield Scott Hancock and Louis Armistead. And even in a bigger way is a dedication to men, to men, the Jack Skellies and Wesley Culps of the world, the Ulysses Grants and James Longstreets, the Irish who came off the boats in New York and those who came off the boats in New Orleans. It is a dedication to the men who were brothers, maybe not through parentage, but through one thing, they were all Americans, fighting in a war of idea. A sad quote about the Irish, specifically in the Civil War, is they escaped a tyrant in the old country just to be shooting and killing each other in the land of the free. And Gettysburg is a testament to that, to the idea that this is the land of the free. 50,000 men laid down their lives in the pursuit of freedom, and for many of them, the end of the abomination that is slavery. Thanks for watching, folks. I know that was a little deep at the end of the video, but it felt like the right way to end a series like this. Again, Gettysburg holds a really special place in my heart. That's why I, like I said at the beginning of the series, I was originally going to do a two-hour video on it, but then I sat back and was like, I can't do that. This means too much to me. I need to explain it all. Um, please like, share, subscribe, and honestly comment. I do love when you guys comment. I love the conversations. Um... Again, I love these videos. Our next series will be starting very soon. Again, this is history. It is personally very important to me, and I'm very happy to have shared it with you all. And we're going to see you all in the next one. Have a great day, guys.